that, that, that's actual video from the company. So if you want to get a sense for what it's like to work at Neuralink, that video is indicative of the atmosphere of, of Neuralink. Uh, it's an incredibly talented team, and you're going to hear a lot from, from them tonight. Um, so we're going to actually go quite into depth on w what we're doing, why we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, and uh, I'm just incredibly impressed with uh, the, the, the caliber of, uh, of, of talent at Neuralink. I think it's important for us to address brain-related diseases. Um, the, 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 everyone, if, they, if you survive cancer and heart disease, the odds are that you will have uh, some brain-related disorder. So it'll be like Alzheimer's or, or dementia. And if you don't, uh, friends and family will for sure. Um, and it, I think unless we have some sort of brain-machine interface uh, that can solve uh, brain ailments of all kinds, whether it's an accident or uh, congenital or any, any kind of brain-related disorder, uh, in, in, or, or a spinal disorder, if you know somebody who's uh, broken their neck or broken their spine, uh, we can solve that with a chip. Um, so th there's, there's very tiny threads that are about, um, ab about a tenth, r roughly, of the cross-sectional area of a, of a human hair. So they're extremely tiny threads. In fact, the, the threads that uh, we, we have, like I said, even in version one, are, are about the same size as a neuron. So if you're going to go stick something in your brain, you, you, you want it to not be giant, uh, you want it to be tiny, um, and to be approximately on par with the things that are already there, the, the neurons. You, you really need this to be done with a robot, because it's very tiny and it needs to be very precise. So you don't, and you don't want to pierce a blood vessel. So when you, so each thread, the, the robot looks looks sort of basically through a microscope and puts a, put, in, inserts each electrode specifically, um, bypassing uh, any vasculature, uh, you know, any, any kind of like blood vessel um, uh, and, and making sure that it can be inserted w without causing trauma uh, or minimal trauma. So just to give you a sense of scale, this is how tiny the threads are. Uh, that is not even a big finger, that is a small finger. Um, <laughs> so the, there's a, these threads are just like, like I said, way, way smaller than a hair, um, and there's a thousand of them. And this is what, what the robot looks like. Um, it's, it's sort of a, quite, quite a complex device, but it, uh, it, it all comes down to a very tiny, tiny point. So just, 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 we want to just like, you see, you see the robot? The robot's on the left, and, um, and then the, um, what looks like the needles for insertion next to a penny, but in fact, the, the, the actual needle that gets inserted is way, way tinier. It's that little tiny thing at the, where the arrow is pointing. That's actually the size of the, the needle. It's about 24 microns in diameter. Uh, it, it's so small you can't really even see it with, in the picture with the penny. You can get a sense for the uh, robot doing the electrode insertion. Um, that, that's a very zoomed in view. So they're all very, very tiny, and the robot is very selectively applying them very, de very delicately. Um, and, uh, and then this is what the chip looks like. So there's action potentials. Um, so each one of those represents one electrode. So there would be up to 10,000 of, of, uh, of, of these lines. And, and then the, the interface to the, um, to the, to the chip is, is wireless. So you have no wires poking out of your head. Very, very important. Um, so you, it, it's, it's basically Bluetooth to your phone. But the, the, the key is like this, this is something that um, is, is going to be uh, not, not stressful, as our goal is not stressful to, to put in. Uh, should work well, hopefully. Uh, would, you know, we'll check it out very carefully before it becomes obviously FDA approved. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and it's wireless. So you, you, the, this, this, I think, has tremendous potential. Um, and we, we hope to uh, have this uh, aspirationally in, in a human patient um, before the end of next year. So this is not, not far. This is sort of what it looks like. This is our little device. 
Uh, it does, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place because they're just like little fine wire, wires. Um, in, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. So, um, and it's, uh, yeah, so our, our current prototype version 0 0.9 has about 1,000 channels. Uh, so that's you know, about 100 times better than the, the next best um, uh, consumer device that's available. And it's a 23 millimeters by 8 millimeters. It actually uh, fits quite nicely in your skull because your, your skull is about 10 millimeters thick. So uh, it fits, it's, it goes flush with your skull, it's invisible, and all you can see afterwards is that there's a tiny scar. And if it's under your hair, you can't see it at all. In fact, I could have a Neuralink right now, and you wouldn't know. Maybe I do. So, uh, and it, it's also got all, all the things that you would expect to see, the sensors you'd expect to see in a smartwatch uh, or a phone, like uh, inertial measurement, temperature, pressure. Uh, so there's actually a lot of functions that this device could do uh, r related to monitoring your health and warning you about a possible heart attack or stroke or other uh, damage, as well as uh, sort of convenience features like playing music. Um, you do a lot. Um, all right, so it's also inductively charged, so um, it's charged in the same way that you, char you charge a smartwatch or a phone. Um, and so you can use it all day, uh, charge it at night, and have full functionality. So you would really, um, you know, it would be, it would be completely seamless, uh, and uh, yeah, no wires. So does it actually work? And uh, what I'm excited to show you, um, I call it like the, the Three Little Pigs demo. Um, and uh, if our uh, animal has this, we're bringing, we're bringing out the, the pigs. And what we're going to show you is a, well, I'll walk right over and show you. So what we have in pen number one is Joyce, uh, and she does not have an implant. <laughs> Obviously, healthy and happy. So here's Dorothy, um, and in the case of Dorothy, um, Dorothy used to have an implant, and then we removed the implant. So this is uh, an, a very important thing to uh, demonstrate, is reversibility. So if you, if you have a neural link, and then you decide you don't want it, or you want to get an upgrade, and the neural link is removed, um, is it removed in such a way that you are still healthy and happy afterwards? And what Dor Dorothy illustrates is that you can put in the neural link, remove it, and be healthy, happy, and indistinguishable from a normal pig. Oh, thanks, Dorothy. <laughs> Here we go. Great. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. This is a, a high-energy pig. Um, all right. Gertrude, thanks for coming out. Um, so what you're, the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. Um, and so on the screen, um, you can see uh, each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if she, yeah, she snuffles around, touches this snout in the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching the snout. And uh, that's what's making the, the beeping sound. All right, cool. So as you can see, uh, we have a healthy and happy pig, um, initially shy, but obviously high energy, and, and uh, uh, you know, kind of loving life, and uh, she's had the implant for two months. So this is a healthy and happy pig with an implant that is two month old, two months old, and working well. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> um, and then um, we actually have. I'm sure, <laughs> I hope this works. Is so we said, well, what if we do two Neuralink implants? Um, and we've been able to uh, do uh, dual neural link implants uh, in, th um, actually, I think three pigs at this point, and we have a couple of them here. Um, and we've been able to show that you can actually have multiple neural links implanted 
Um, and again, healthy and happy and indistinguishable from a normal pig. So, um, so it's possible to have multiple links in your, in your head and have them all be sending out signals and you're working well. So we just showed you a demonstration of uh, reading brain activity. And um, let's see, you probably see that. Um, as I was saying, uh, each of those dots represents a neural spike. And the, um, the, the blue chart at the bottom is showing an accumulation of neural spikes in that region. In terms of additional uh, brain reading activity, uh, when we have, um, say, um, one of our pigs on a treadmill, <laughs> pig on a treadmill. <laughs> um, it's a funny, funny concept, really. Um, and we uh, take the, the readings from the neurons, and we try to predict the posi position of the joints. Um, and so we, say we have the predicted position of the joints, and then we, we measure the actual position of the joints. You can see that they're almost exactly aligned. So we're able with um, a wireless neural, imp neural implant to actually predict the position of, of all of the limbs uh, in the pig's body uh, with, with very high accuracy. Now, in terms of, of writing to the brain or stim stimulating neurons, uh, we obviously need pr precise control of the electric field in, in space and time. We need a wide range of current for different brain regions. Uh, some, some regions require delicate stimulation, some require a lot of current, uh, and, and you want obviously no harm to the brain over time. Um, and the way we, um, part of the way we analyze the, the stimulate, stimulating neurons uh, is with a two photon uh, microscopy. I, I always have trouble pronouncing that microscopy. Um, and uh, it's very impressive technology. You can actually literally see in real time uh, how the neurons are firing. So uh, the, the red sort of things are the neurons, the red, red sort of flashing things are the neurons uh, firing, or I should say the, uh, uh, the electrodes firing. So the red things are electrodes firing, and then the green are the neuron bodies responding to uh, the current from the electrode. So you can see them lighting up different brain regions. Uh, and then by carefully controlling the electric field, you can actually have one electrode uh, influence possibly 1,000 or 10,000 neurons. So although you might only have 1,000 electrodes implanted, you could be influencing um, millions of neurons. And this is just a, a similar chart showing uh, stimulation at different uh, power levels. So, like I said, for the initial device, it's read-write in every channel uh, with about 1,024 channels, all-day battery life, uh, recharges overnight, uh, has quite a long uh, range. So you can, you can, you can have uh, the range, uh, the range being to your phone, I should say. That's um, kind of an important thing. This would connect to uh, your phone. Um, and, and actually, the, so the, the application uh, would be on your phone. And, the, and it will be communicating by, by essentially Bluetooth low energy to the device in your head. Um, that's why I say it, in a lot of ways it is like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. So, um, and then like I said, it, you would not be able to see the device at all. It would, you would look completely normal and just have a small scar uh, under your hair. And we're making good progress towards clinical studies. Um, I'm excited to announce that we received a, a breakthrough device designation from the FDA in July, uh, thanks to the hard work of the Neuralink team. So. This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. If you look carefully, you can see that the fur on his head hasn't quite fully grown back yet. He's learned to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Page's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when he moves his hand up, and others when he moves it to the right. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Page's intended hand movements in real time. First, 
we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. As he's playing this game, we're wirelessly streaming, in real time, the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pager still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. One of the things the Neuralinks allow Pager to do is to play his favourite video game, Pong. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. We've removed the joystick altogether. Now that he's up to speed, let's increase the difficulty and see how well Pager can play with the Neuralink. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused, and he's playing entirely of his own volition. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. Great game, Pager. And what better reward for a monkey than a banana?